What's going on, everybody? Welcome in to the Monday, February 19th, 2024 edition of the Daily Energy Newsbeat Stand Up. Here are today's top headlines. First up, even the world's biggest EV market is slowing. And I'll give you a hint that's China, guys, because the next article that rolls right into it is China's stock market collapse is the end of the road for many forward investors. Those really go together well. Over to India now, Dr. Jashankar's defense of India's Russian oil uh, purchases proves that his uh, country is the Vishwaru. So very interesting article, actually, as Stu points out, uh, a lecture um, to the Americans, specifically with Aunt, uh, our Secretary of State over there, uh, Anthony Blinken. Next up, government approves construction permit for new type of nuclear reactor for the first time in decades. We love this. And then finally, BlackRock invests $550 million into the world's largest direct air capture plant. Stu will then toss it over to me. I will quickly cover what happened in the oil and gas markets. We didn't really see anything besides uh, rig counts come out. We're going to see a lot of earnings roll out next week. So we'll let you guys get out of here here quickly and make sure to hit you back with all the earnings as the week rolls out. As always, I'm Michael Tanner. That is Stuart Turley. Go ahead and kick us off, my friend. All right. Hey, let's get rolling around the country here. Uh, excuse me, the world, even the world's biggest electric vehicle market is slowing. Uh, boy, Michael, you take a look at that big picture. Of, that's a lot of EVs mm -hmm. on racks, man. That looks like uh, Hot Wheels just all lined up. Uh, the explosion growth, Michael, is just nuts on what they were trying to do to the rest of the world as they were just building the cheap EV cars. And now they're uh, just proliferating around the world and they're piling up everywhere. Mm -hmm. This is an interesting point. Uh, BYD, the crown jewel of the Chinese car makers, is backed by Warren Buffett. Interesting. He added enough factory capacity alone by December to churn out 4 million cars a year. But California can't put any uh, charging stations in, so I find this quite humorous. Um, that figure is a million more than it sold in 2023. That is nuts. That goes along with our next story coming around the corner. It's foreign uh, factory making EVs delivering cars from Uzbekistan and a second in Thailand starts in July. Brazil and Hungary in the coming years are setting up a plant in Mexico, which you would consider exporting mm -hmm. to the U.S. that sells for eleven thousand dollars in china is that a scooter is that you know i don't know man is that holy smokes well i i think the the first thing that that's interesting is that there's a you know there's a math you know there was this boom of buying electric vehicles around the world i mean there's a reason guys like warren buffett got in on it you know the last i would say outside of 2023 2018 to 2022 there was quote unquote, this explosive growth in EVs. But now that growth has slown. And as Stu mentioned, you're you're cr cr cranking out 4 million cars a year when you're only selling 3 million. That's where it's going to get you, you know, uh, Miss Producer, if you can throw up this, the, the, the head image, I and mean, that's where you get the Hot Wheels. You know, <laughs> I mean, these things, you just pick them out right there and just start running them down the tracks. Point is, this is now going to only make EVs cheaper. And if they plan on moving and trying to take market share in the United States, it'll be interesting to see if that happens. Because I'm not convinced. I mean, I'm with you. I wouldn't want to get in an $11,000 car that's really a scooter. I mean, it's like every European yep. movie you see when the bad guy's running by and he slams into one of those like smart cars. That's all I can think about is now I'm just oh, no. I'm going to end up on uh, get my car stolen as an extra in an action movie. Um, um but what this will do is this will only make it cheaper. And I wonder what this will do to Tesla's dominance in the United States. You know, another interesting point of this article is they point out that Tesla is not the major EV provider worldwide. They're only the major EV provider in the United States. And what happens when these these cars will inevitably make themselves make it into America? It's just going to happen like Hyundai, like Toyota. It eventually things just migrate into the United States uh, from overseas in terms of top brands. So it'll be interesting to see how consumers 
differentiate. I mean, I, I the oh, thing yeah. that Tesla has going for it is the autopilot and the self-driving. And you could argue that that is the reason Tesla is more valuable than the fact that it's an EV. It's that they well, have this completely yeah. theoretically revolutionary technology that could allow us to basically all stop driving, which would be sweet. I'll, I'll tell you, I, I don't know enough about this one yet, but Michael, the insurance around the world for EVs is doubling and tripling. And so I, I think you're going to see a slowdown in EV purchases because of insurance. Mm -hmm. And uh, quite honestly, when you have an EV brake, uh, all you have to do is crack one small uh, battery panel and, mm -hmm. the, and the EV is totaled. Yeah. So, you know, I don't know. Uh, oh, no, I don't know if I want to own. I'm not owning an EV. I think and, and I think what this article points out specifically is that there's a there's kind of an inflection point coming with EVs where mm -hmm. dem supply is outpacing demand. And that as an economist, that always leads to a massive price drop. So maybe this will allow more people who want an EV to get it. The question is, where do those price cuts come into? Is it Tesla oh, yeah. its prices or is it China and this BYD pushing really hard to get its cars into the United States because they have the price advantage? But, you know, Michael, this goes along into the next story here. China's stock market collapse is the end of the road for many foreign investors. Just like Warren Buffett, uh, if you notice in that other article, Michael, um, when you take a look, I had another source reach out to me over the weekend, and there's been over this. I, I haven't verified this, but there's 500,000 people that have committed suicide in China because of the failure of the stock market in China right now. So how bad is it? The state media is not letting it out. Mm -hmm. How bad uh, are the EVs being pushed out when you got the uh, million, you know, uh, overflowing on that? I don't know, but I sure wouldn't want to be invested in the uh, Chinese uh, stock market right now. Because these two stories go hand in hand, but boy, if that is true that all those people are killing themselves because they've lost all their fortunes, my my heart goes out to them on that. So yeah, well, and we, we we've been covering on this show what's been happening in the commercial real estate market in China. A lot of this stuff is yeah. propped up by this what was a supposed massive expansion of real estate, and it's. It's it's clearly now, as we saw in in in, in the, the late 2000s, when we had a, you know, at some point, you know, you can't keep having a housing boom. We, we've talked about the ghost cities that are out there that were built and nobody right. moved there. Um, and, and it's seeming now to affect uh, specifically Wall Street. You know, it comes as in, you know, 13 trillion of debt in terms of the real estate market over there in in China. Yeah. And what's funny is now I don't want to get us off course here, but we have a bet, and I know this would be controversial, but I would rather have the United States debt situation than China's debt situation. It's Why an is interesting that? fact. Well, because we have a much higher and resilient GDP than China in terms of the amount of the amount of the ratio of our debt to GDP is a lot better than China's. We'll have to go verify, you know? And so I, it, it's interesting from the standpoint is everybody is now, you know, everybody for the longest time was worried about the United States debt, still horrible, but it's better than what's going on in China right now. And the issue is China, part of the reason why you'd rather be the United States is China will always need the United States to help buy goods from them because China won't consume the own go the goods they make. You see what I mean? We could stop buying goods from China and buy them from elsewhere. We're going to have to pay more for them and do a bunch of stuff, but we could do that. China will always need to sell us stuff. And that's where I think the, you know, of two terrible situations, I'd almost rather be the one that maybe has another option or two than you're the other saying, one. You're seeing a major change uh, in the manufacturing shifting to India. Mm -hmm. Um, and so India is stepping up and causing a lot of the problems with Chinese manufacturing. Yep. Absolutely. So let's, let's roll to the next one. Speaking of India, um, Dr. Uh, Jashan Ankar, I, I hope I pronounced that right. Uh, defense, uh, defense of India's Russian oil purchases 
proves that his country is the uh, Visha uh, Rag uh, a Guru. <laughs> Visha Guru. I cannot pronounce Indian. My apologies to uh, the entire Indian uh, culture. <laughs> Uh, Mo, uh, Indian Prime Minister Modi has conceptualized growing his role in global affairs over the past few years as being the world teacher. Um, and I got to hand it to him. They, they are actually stepping up where mm -hmm. uh, the U.S. is uh, going backwards. They're going ahead. And um, in this ar uh, article, uh, our Secretary Blinken was there and was pretty much handed a uh oh his hat in a hand when he says we're teaching the rest of the world on our policies we're buying russian oil and it was kind of funny he just go, huh <laughs> well isn't anthony blinken sitting next to him yes <laughs> it's even funnier you can't buy that kind of entertainment um Whoever trained our political staff needs to have a new interview. Well, it, what India has shown us and, and and what they've said, and I don't know if, if, if you can take this, you can take this for what sort they've shown us is they're going to look out for the Indian people. We're going to continue to buy as cheap of energy as possible because we understand that the easiest way to rise people out of poverty is to provide them low-cost energy. You may not like the tactics. You may not like the road, but the end in order to raise India up in economically is only going to come through specifically ch our, uh, cheap, cheap energy. We're going to talk about specifically in, in my segment the, the, the inflation data that came out. I mean, we are right. still experiencing inflation here primarily due to how expensive energy was. I mean, as an oil man, I love $80 oil. As a consumer, and I'd love... I, it, COVID was nice. It cost me like 20 bucks to fill my 30-gallon tank up. You know, and it's, it, 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 it's that give and take of if you want to see economic expansion, you need to have cheap cheap energy wherever it comes from right now the cheapest place is russia i promise you if tomorrow solar was the cheapest form of energy india would cover themselves in solar everybody would i mean that's the funny part is the market will always go towards the most efficient which is generally the cheapest option right um and that's why i don't know about the evs that we uh, had on this energy thread today um because i EVs, the insurance companies. Let's add this other as a rule. Insurance company, the market will go to the cheapest form of energy until the insurance companies get involved, and then they will determine yeah. what. Watch what, what? What? Just follow the insurance companies. If they're insuring <laughs> it, it's probably safe. It's exactly right. Let's What's go next? to the next one here. Government approves construction permit for new type of nuclear reactor. First time in decades. This is huge. Love uh, this. The U.S. Nuclear Regulatory Commission has issued a construction permit for a new type of nuclear test reactor in Oak Ridge, Tennessee. Molten fluoride salt instead of wa water as a coolant. This is really huge. Uh, Kairos Power is uh, thrilled to have uh, its archived its major regulatory milestone as fi final preparations to start construction at the Hermes site next year, said Mark Lafour, uh, Kairos Power Chief Executive. I'm going to reach out to him and see if I can get him on the In fact I already Absolutely. have. I'll have to reach out again. So that's pretty darn cool. Yeah, it's it's going to be very interesting. And they specifically mention um, our favorite Miss America, Grace Stanky. Um, oh, yeah. She's article. right down so in the article, sure we too. Little, we got to give a look. We, we've had her on the podcast multiple times. Um, I mean, this is good, you know, because talking about the cheapest and most efficient form of energy, that really is nuclear. You know, guys like Doug oh, Sandridge is. have accurately laid out why if we could do this properly, Nuclear is the best move. The problem is you've got these regulatory commissions, you know, legislation through regulation. It's making Ugh. it's becoming it so hard to permit these that we we get all excited when just a new construction permit is there. It's a test reactor. As much as I'd love to jump up and down, what's that going to do? It's a test reactor. You're still five to ten years away. Uh, and then you got to get another permit to build the actual one. Right. 
So, so we need to, you know, once I hear about nuclear regulation reform, then I'll get excited. Right. All right. Hey, let's go to BlackRock here. Um, there's a huge uh, change in paradigm shift changing. BlackRock invests $550 million in world's largest direct air capture plant. Michael, uh, Warren Buffett, uh, we just talked about, you can see where he pops back up in this energy thread today mm -hmm. here. Um, direct air capture capture systems by oxy uh, are the only way to do this machines suck air out of the atmosphere extract the co2 and then release the air back into the environment it costs up to a thousand dollars to remove a ton of co2 existing in a direct air capture system uh who is doing air capture occidental uh, there you go. Who this owns, joint venture. Who's the largest non-majority shareholder of Occidental? Warren Buffett. Interesting. Oh. Warren Buffett and BlackRock getting into bed together. Interesting. Oh. Imagine that. Now, here's where uh, this is tied in with the ESG investing hypocrisy has now come full circle. Uh, and again, why did Warren Buffett, you and I stripped apart the Oxy uh, merger that they just did. Why did he drop in another $2.7 million in investment in Oxy, Michael? It's because I picked out that the direct air capture, his tax benefits and everything else. Whenever Warren Buffett sees tax money or uh, in, in uh, the Inflation Reduction Act money available, he invests. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly what this is all about is, oh, it's now OK for BlackRock to invest in oil and gas, but they're going to look at Occidental as a huge win because they're oil and gas, they're profitable, and they're taking advantage of the direct air capture. I thought it was pretty interesting. The Strato system is 30 percent complete. Yeah, I mean to to be honest, it's it's it this one point five, which is the name of the the um the name it was the name of the original company. It's now the new joint venture between Oxy and BlackRock. It's now called Stratos, um, or Stratos, excuse me, is the facility. One point five is the name of the entity. They've already got Amazon and Airbus pre-purchasing credits equivalent to about two hundred fifty thousand and four hundred thousand metric tons. So the real question is, what is that? What's that? BlackRock's got to know what that value of that stream is. It's like a rent well, roll. I mean, you've already, it's it's the best way to do a business. Pre-sell. Yep. Pre-sell your product. Yep. Why not? Well, if you take a look, this also goes into some of the other stories that we have ran last week, and that is the uh, climate and carbon taxes that are coming in on oil and gas companies. Oxy will survive this because they have their own credits. If you take a look at other um, legislation coming through regulatory actions, and that is the carbon methane taxes is going to be in the same thing coming around the corner. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. But I don't think Warren, Warren Buffett is a smart guy. So I have a hard time. Now, do I think Oxy? Yes. I, we could talk a lot about this, but I do think Warren Buffett's a smart guy and it could become very clear that Occidental, as you've always said, becomes the leader in the carbon credit capture space, which is going to skyrocket its Wall Street value because Wall Street's going to love that. Exactly. And who's at the center of it? Warren Buffett. Well, the yes. Um but I still think that uh, that's this is not even the discussion whether or not CO2 captures even uh, whether or not it's necessary or not. Plants love CO2, but we'll leave that discussion for another day. <laughs> All right. Well, before we hop over to finance, we'll go ahead and pay the bills here. Um, as always, the news and analysis uh, that you're hearing is brought to you by the world's greatest website, www.energynewsbeat.com, the best place for all of your energy and oil and gas news. Stu and the team do a tremendous job making that sure that website's up to speed with everything you need to know to be at the tip of the spear. 
when it comes to the energy and oil and gas business. You can uh, uh, go ahead and hit the description below, find all the links to the articles, um, find uh, links to the transcripts. Um, we're going to be rolling out a survey in the next few days. We really hope you guys uh, go ahead and fill that out. So check out the description below. We'll give you everything that you need to know. Um, um, to that, you can also check us out, dashboard.energynewsbeat.com. It's our data news combo product. We've got a lot of cool stuff rolling out alongside of that, so please check that out. But let's go ahead and and, and, and talk finances for a second, guys. Uh, S&P 500, um, a little bit of a bull market this week after after kind of tumbling Monday morning in terms of the open. W what was interesting, though, Stu, is we did see a pretty hot inflation um, report that came out on Friday, specifically when it comes to uh, the producer price index, which is, again, it's kind of that measure of wholesale inflation. We saw an increase of 0.3 percentage points, um, which is, again, higher than the expectation um, of 0.1. Go ahead and include uh, excluding food and energy. This is an, another interesting fact. So poor producer price index, removing food and energy, which they sort of um, – uh, look on a different scale, rose 0.5%, which was higher than the expectation of 0.1. So both of those numbers kind of blowing it out of the water. And what does that mean for the overall markets? Why did the markets Why react? do they do that, Michael? Because if they take food and gasoline out because of the regulatory issues going on and it's an effective interest rate, uh, I mean, inflation rate of 18% if you leave those in there. But that's what people feel when they go to the, the store. Yeah, it's it's a little bit of a cat and mouse game when you talk about like core producer price index versus the wholesale producer price index. You know, the, the cat the, and mouse sounds illegal to me. Yeah. I mean, ironically, energy prices have come down a little bit on average since the peak. I mean, but the problem is people, you know, when 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 the administration and the Biden administration says inflation is coming down. I mean, they're not wrong. The problem is they were also there for the highest inflation ever. So when you're coming down from a peak, yeah, at some point before you hit the next notches below, you you technically, if you if you start measuring at the top, you are going down. But this is a what you know. This is but they're going to raise interest rates again this year. Oh yeah, that's I mean, and that's what the market was fuel for of, and that's you know specifically if rates, you know, if they continue. If, if this continues, the idea of three rate cuts this year is going to turn into two. And that's going to, I mean, the market's already above 5,000 uh, 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 5, uh, 5, right now for the S&P 500. NASDAQ about 17.6. So, I mean, there's still juice in there, but it's, man, it's it's becoming um, pretty big. You know, the, the interesting part is the producer price index is the cost of the goods and services that people, that things that produce producers feel. The consumer price index came out on Tuesday. That was 3.1 percentage points. So you got to remember, consumer price wow. index is what we feel. Producer price is the prices that producers feel. And then things happen. The market happens in the middle that changes those percentages. So specifically, you know, we also did see the CPI come out at 3.1. Again, expected to be 2.9 percentage points. So just uh, a little bit higher than expected. You know, in terms of what that did for the overall oil and gas markets, we didn't really see much on Friday. We saw rig counts drop um, by about two. Uh, um, that came out via our friends over at Baker Hughes, six hundred and twenty-one. So, you know, it's funny. Last week we saw a, a, you know a rise in, in 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 two rigs. Ironically, came from the natural gas, which is as we record this right now, one dollar sixty cents. That's not good. A dollar sixty is is going to be tough to make a little bit of money on. But um, as 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 I think operators move forward, they're going to become a little bit more cautious. Those two rigs were actually dropped from the gas side, so and we're still we're still about one hundred thirty nine rigs lower than we were last year, where oil traded about this amount. So it's pretty interesting to see. I, I saw this pop up, Stu, um, um. Uh, la uh, on Thursday, but I, or yesterday, but I wanted to go ahead on Saturday. I want to go ahead and talk about it. Exxon Mobil is abandoning, or Exxon Mobil dismisses court bid to truck oil in Santa Barbara. This is, yeah, it just it's another nail in the coffin for what California oil used to be. Uh, Exxon Mobil on Saturday announced it's abandoning its legal challenge against Santa Barbara County, effectively ending the company's proposal to transport 
uh, uh, oil up and down the coast, halting its plan to revive the three shutdown drilling platforms offshore in Gaivada. Um, the proposal would have allowed the company to truck millions of gallons of oil per week on Highway 101 and Route 166 in what is seen as an effort to resume the operations of the region and restart three offshore platforms that were shut down following the 2015 oil spill at Refigo Refinery. Um, you know, Santa Barbara denied the plan. They filed, you know, they was originally denied by Santa Barbara. Uh, Exxon filed a lawsuit. They went ahead on Thursday, or excuse me, on Friday and went ahead and notified the U.S. District Court they'd be dismissing the lawsuit um, after an intense amount of pushback. Um, everybody said, woo, yay, but what does this mean for Exxon? Or excuse me, our, our favorite state, California? Higher energy prices, you'll probably have to keep buying from Russia. Well, uh, considering I, you you heard it here second, Michael, that uh, in my opinion, they will be buying gasoline and diesel from China uh, because China has increased their uh, downstream capacity by a million barrels per day. And considering their uh, Governor Newsom uh, has potential contracts in place you'll be buying all of your refined products from china tell me that's not good for the environment it's not good i mean i'm also I, i'm also for i'm also pro u.s pipelines i mean this is also what's funny is they keep saying that oh there's all these oil truck spills well cool can we get a pipeline permitted then no you can't no <laughs> okay so you know i think this is an absolutely scary quote if you're a california oil producer uh, Matia Wai, the executive director of the the, the Wish Toyo Kushmash Foundation, quote, we celebrate this massive victory against Exxon and warn any and all future resource extractors that we will not stop fighting. I mean, it's all out war over there. No, uh, if I was a oil company, I would never do business in Colorado or New York or California. It's hard to. Luckily, there's no oil and gas really in New York, so you don't have to worry about that. Uh, uh, I I vote that we cut them all off of all fu fossil fuels. All those in favor? I I guess, but uh, you're you're basically writing the death of all those people. I mean, we don't got enough to supply it. So that's the crazy part. If you were to actually do that, if these people got their wish and had no oil and gas in their state, they would eviscerate their population within exactly. months. Well, well, New York would be even worse because you'd freeze to death. California, you might be able to survive a little bit because at least it's nice. Be careful what you vote in or you ask for. <laughs> Absolutely. So, all right, Stu, what else? What should people be uh, watching for this week? Well, I'm going to be kind of interested to see how uh, the political situation rolls around here. Things are heating up. T Tucker Carlson stuff is really... Uh, coming out there around the world. And uh, I think you're going to see a crazier world in this next few months. It's about to happen. I'm shocked. You think the world's getting crazy. I'm telling you, I'm shocked. <laughs> I just, it's, I just like to give a shout out to all of our listeners and all of the feedback mm -hmm. that we're getting. And I'd also like to thank CNN, CBS, ABC, all of the other major news stream uh, for lying and giving us a chance. Michael, I think that our podcast is going off the roof thanks to those knuckleheads. Yeah, no, it's 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 very convenient. Um, we appreciate everybody. Feel free to leave us a five star review on, on any and all platforms. Um, just say Stu's a knucklehead, but uh, but but the show is good. So, all right, guys, with that, we'll let you get out of here. Get back to work. Start your Monday. Hope it's a great one. We'll see you tomorrow.